Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Future Fiber. This is your host, Jenny. And today we're going to be talking about cable cardigans, Aaron cardigan to be specific. It is going to be fall soon if New York City gets the hint that it's supposed to be not 90 degrees, but unfortunately it is today, so I'm actually sweltering right now wearing the sweater. I didn't really want to make a big fall plans video because as I said, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, <laughs> let alone like for the next couple of months. So I don't love to plan like blocks out because then I'm just setting myself up for disappointment. You know what I mean? That's kind of why I make these compilation videos around a certain like particular garment that I want to knit because um, then it's a little bit more focused and I can apply it and I'm actually going to knit something from that list. You get what I'm saying? I know a cable cardigan for the fall and winter is not very revolutionary, but I'm a fairly new knitter. I think people get that. I felt like I was up for a challenge. I decided to give a cable cardigan a go. So uh, my list is very short today and that's because I have a pretty decent idea of what I want to be knitting and it's basically a reproduction of this. Well, not exactly. Let's I'll talk about that, okay? This sweater, this is not made by me. I got this on eBay recently because I've been on the lookout. I know I'm supposed to be, you know, on a no buy and I did really well this entire year until this week <laughs> when I found this sweater come up on eBay. I think the history of it is a little bit interesting. So this sweater, this uh, Aaron Cardigan is from a brand called Halim Hand Weavers. And this brand is a sweater slash wool company that was in production from, I believe, uh, 1950s, 60s to 2005. They were based out of Jeju Island, which is like to the south of Korea. Korea doesn't have a strong history of knitting before like 1900s as you know they started getting more western commerce coming in and out. They were more in the realm of like embroidery and wovens rather than like woolen like knitted items. Um, so this and you know the style is not traditional <laughs> obviously to Korea. So how did they have this brand that just like knitted and made sweaters? To talk about that we have to talk about the state of Korea a little bit in the 50s. So there was the Korean War. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Because of that, and also we were, you know, Korea was coming out of a period of colonialization. So uh, yeah, you can understand that they were not doing particularly well financially and economically. Particularly in Jeju, there was a Irish missionary group that came over and uh, was working with the local people there. And they were trying to kind of figure out a way to provide jobs and support for the local women there. Being in an island, they either went to the mainland or they were having a hard time like finding things to do <laughs> to make money. So the missionaries being Irish, they decided, why don't we teach them how to knit and uh, make processed wool items? So that's kind of how this brand came about. Um, Halim hand weavers or Halim Sujik. So they made a variety of like woolen items. So they made like plaid blankets um, and they also made Aaron cardigans. There's been a revitalization effort of this brand in the past like two or three years. There's also a video documentary that they made around this whole um, effort that I'll link down below. It's only in Korean, but yeah, I'll link down the video below if you want more information about it. But I was just like really stoked to have this cardigan. I don't know how it made its way over to America, but I found it on eBay, shipped from Pennsylvania. So, you know, I kind of had to get it, you know, like it's like a part of history. That was a long winded way of me saying that I want to knit myself a cardigan similar to the style. I have a pretty clear idea of what I want. I don't want it to be a direct reproduction of what I'm wearing. First of all, I want the shoulders to be not raglan. So I want it to be not drop shoulder, but like a set and sleeve. And I also want the diamond 
cable pattern running down the front on either side like this. So it doesn't have to be in the center. This is kind of off center as well here, but I want this kind of shape in the front, like so that it's like I have columns on either side. And I was trying to figure out what this was called, but I think it's just called diamond, Aaron diamond cable. So if you know of a more proper term, please leave it down below. And I want it to be a round neck. So this is round neck right now. So I want to keep that the same. I want, I don't want a V-neck cardigan. Um, in this style. I think the last thing is that I don't really want to do a sh like a ton of modifications to the pattern. I am okay with changing certain elements, but I don't know enough about like cable knitting or Aran knitting or yeah, anything like that. So I want to be able to follow the pattern as closely as possible which really limited my options, to be honest. All those things you would think like, okay, well, this style's been around for a while. Aran sweaters are nothing new, like fisherman style, like sweaters, whatever. Like that's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. I'm sure you could find something that's existing. But I don't know if my <laughs> searching abilities are not as good as I thought, or maybe people, because it's such a common like style and like traditional style, people don't write it up as much. They always want to be doing something different, you know what I mean? So it was actually pretty difficult for me to find like everything that fits that criteria. So, but I do have some options. And once again, this is not a recommendation list. I cannot recommend any of these patterns because I haven't knit any of them up. It's just what I'm thinking of knitting for this project. So let's, let's go through them. The first cardigan contender I have is Plats and Links cardigan by Kathy Zimmerman and this pattern was originally published in Interweave Knits Winter 2012 publication but is now available to buy separately on interweave.com for 479 so this one I think is pretty close to what I want it does have the round neck it has the uh, the diamond pattern going down the either fronts. I think the fit is pretty good. It doesn't have a ton of positive ease where it doesn't feel super skin tight and I think the length is really good. This is knit up in worsted weight yarn and the recommended needle size is US 5 which is 3.75 and US 7 4.5. And then the sizes that are available is from 37 and 3 fourths of an inch to 51 and 3 fourths of an inch bust circumference. Okay, so returning to this, returning to this Platts and Links cardigan, I think another thing that kind of drew me to this cardigan was that it has a lot of projects on Ravelry already. It has 296 projects. So a lot of people have knitted up and it's got a lot of great reviews. Um, and then the, the projects that people have knit up looks really good. So I think this would be a good contender things to note i if i knit this up i would definitely be changing up the the finishing edges so by that i mean the button band um, and the ribbing on the bottom as well as the ribbing on the cuffs it seems like it's got little mini cables for those edge finishes and i'm not necessarily a fan of that look so i what i think i'll do is just replace it with um one by one or two by two rib for those um, edges. That's not a big modification. I feel pretty comfortable doing that. So um, I'm okay with that. One other thing is that the neckline, um, the button band, I don't know if that's just because of the way that the button band has uh, a, row, a column row of cables going up and down, and maybe that affects the way that it sits, but I feel like the button band over here, it sits a little bit too high close to the neck, at least in the sample photo. So I think that would be another thing that I would be kind of concerned about if I were to knit at this. And then the other thing, the last thing is that this isn't actually a, like a set and sleeve. Um, in the uh, Ravelry kind of notes is listed as being uh, raglan. <laughs> um, but in the photos and the way that it's constructed, it kind of also like, it kind of almost looks like saddle shoulder because the cable pattern that's going up the arm 
continues all the way to the, the shoulder, top of the shoulder. And then so the raglan is shaped more like this rather than um, like this pattern that's usually done, you know? So it doesn't cut into the front panel of the cardigan like diagonally this way. It kind of comes up more this way, like a saddle shoulder. So that's why I feel okay with having this in the list for me. The next one is... This pattern is called Classic Erin, and it's a pattern designed by Jane Snedden Peaver. And this is a pattern that's available for purchase on the Briggs & Little Ravelry store. I believe they're a yarn seller, like they, they, or yarn manufacturer, I guess is like the better way to say it. But this is a pattern that is a little bit older, I believe. It doesn't say when it was originally um, published. A little bit more information. This is knit up in bulky weight yarn. And then of course, being that the Briggs & Little is a yarn manufacturer, they recommend that you use their yarn, Briggs & Little Heritage 2-ply or Briggs & Little Aran 3-ply. The recommended needle size is four millimeter and five millimeter. So I don't understand why it's marked as bulky, <laughs> but the sizes that are available for this cardigan, it fits sizes from 32 inches all the way to 50 inches. Um, and it's supposed to be, I guess from the picture, it's supposed to be like unisex. This is also designed with a lot of positive ease. You can tell from the picture. So I think um, that's something that I also like that you could, you know, probably shove a bunch of <laughs> like layers underneath and keep yourself like pretty warm throughout. The reason why I chose this to be included is that this um, pattern, well, a couple of reasons. I think the pluses are that this pattern comes in both a cardigan and pullover form. So you get, you're getting two patterns for one price. And, and I, once again, it has the, uh, the diamond, cable that's running down the front um, and it also is flanked with these like just regular I guess cables I don't know what to call them are they plaits but it feels very symmetrical it feels very classic it feels like something that you could find at you know a goodwill <laughs> or like you go to buffalo vintage and then you find this and then you're like, dang, what a steal. And it's like from the 80s and you hope that it's made with 100% wool, but it's actually like acrylic. And then you get disappointed and you put it down. That, was, that wasn't that was based on a real event. I feel like this is pretty close to what I want. Uh, the fit, the arm size is like pretty loose, which reads really 80s to me, but I feel like it could be pretty good. Um, otherwise, um, so there might be some modification I might want to make if I want it to be a little bit closer fitting. But if I wanted something that's a little bit like looser, because this once again is a like little tighter, I feel like this is a good contender. And some things that are making me hesitate from actually buying and knitting this up is that um, there are basically no, <laughs> there are basically like no projects um on Ravelry there's one that somebody posted and it looks really really good so that is a good thing but I don't have any information on if this is like easy to knit or if there's like charts that's another thing once again I'm not really great at complex like stitch patterns right now so I need all the hand holding I can get and I'm not sure if this is going to be the one that provides me with that so that's a little bit of a um, what's keeping me from knitting this, but I think it looks very good. So that's another option that I have. And then the next one, the next option is Cupcake by Sarah Hatton. And this was a pattern that was published in Rowan 60, which I believe is the Rowan magazine that was published in 2016. So this is a couple of years old too, but this is like one of the more latest um, options that I am presenting to you guys today so that but I really like this one I think this is very I don't know what about it maybe it's just like the picture 
<laughs> the sample photo, but it reads very feminine to me. Very librarian, but in like a good way. Uh, yeah, I think it's really good. And um, once again, it does have the cable going down, the diamond cable going down the, the center kind of panels. Um, but it has an interesting um, cable that I'm not really sure what the name of it is, but it kind of looks like a U that's um, like linked together. <laughs> Doing a real good job of explaining these terms. I really like how the cardigan overall fits. It seems like it has just amount, just the right amount of ease. Um, and but I also like that the shoulders fit right on the the shoulder line, and it's not like super drop shoulder or super like small fitting or anything like that. So I feel like this will be a really good contender. Um, the cable pattern is a little bit different from some of the other ones that I've seen. I think it would be great if. I could get a diamond cable that has these, what is this, moss stitch inside almost? I think that could be like, that would be my ideal. But this one is a little bit more like simplified form of that. It looks a little bit more modern, a little bit more classic but modern. And I like the yarn they used in the sample photo. Um, it's got like multicolor specks in it, like almost like tweed. And I feel like that makes it look really nice. Let's talk about some specs for this. The suggested yarn weight is worsted weight yarn. And then this being a Rowan pattern, they recommend you use the Rowan yarn, which is Rowan Pure Wool Superwash Worsted. I personally want to do Superwash with this, this because I don't want it to stretch out super much, you know? So I think I would choose a different yarn that's a little bit more rustic. The needle size that's recommended is four millimeter and also 4.5 millimeter. Another thing with sizes once again this is kind of smaller on the smaller side this goes from um, size small to 2xl which i i don't know why it doesn't say like what that fits oh if it's chest 81 centimeters to 127 centimeters or 32 inches to 50 inches yeah and this also has a couple of projects on ravelry already around 40 so i feel comfortable Knitting this up, I feel like I could probably reference other people's notes and that'll be fun and good. But uh, <laughs> the downside of this pattern, I've hyped it up this much, but let's talk about why I might not be knitting this. I can't buy it online. I have to buy the Rowan magazine um, and I've managed to find it some places. And I think the Rowan um, website still sells it, but it's like $30, $35 on the Rowan website and I have to like, by you have to pay shipping and all of that and there's other patterns in that book but none of them are really like it for me none of them are really interesting to me so this would be i would be buying that book only for this pattern and i don't know how i feel about that right now um in this economy i don't know but if i can find a copy for cheap i think i would definitely try and snag it because i even if i don't knit this right now this i feel like this is a really good pattern to kind of have in like the arsenal, you know, and knit it whenever I have the yarn for it. So that's the Cupcake by Sarah Hatton. I've kind of gone in the order of like things that I would like to knit. So these next two are like top, top contenders out of the five. Let's talk about Aaron Cardigan by Gwyn Morgan. And this is, this was published originally in traditional knitting patterns of Ireland, Scotland, and England, or traditional knitting in the British Isles. So those are actually the same books. Um, I guess uh, the second edition was just like a reprint and then they like changed the name, but they are the same books. So if you ever, if you're looking for it and you don't buy both of them, just buy one. This was originally published in January of 1981. So this is an, this is a oldie but a goodie and the recommended yarn weight is Aran weight um, and the needle sizes are 5 millimeter, 4.5 and 3.75 millimeters. So, you know, all in the same range. This has the smallest size range to, to um, date, to list, whatever. Sizes are from 33 inches to 41 inch bust. So it is very small. Like this is like, pretty much what I was imagining when I wanted, when I said, when I said that I wanted an Aran cardigan, this is like it. 
Uh, so that's a huge plus. Um, and I love all of the different... There's a couple of projects um, for this pattern on Ravelry already, and I love all of the different renditions that people have done. Uh, most of it is in cream, like a traditional like Aran sweater color, like natural wool. Um, but yeah, I also really like that people have said they've had this for like years and then they've patched it up over the years and it's holding up strong and it's like a classic cardigan pattern and I don't know I just really like it because it's like older <laughs> I think that's pretty charming um but the, I guess that could also be a downside because the pattern is definitely not charted um I actually managed to get a hold of this book um because you can get it on um the internet archive you can get the ebook version like rent it um from i think i don't exactly know how it works but i'm pretty sure you can also b get it from your local libraries like through libby or um possibly through just like you know renting out the physical book and then like photocopying the pattern for yourself for your own use but and then you can also get this pattern through just buying the book um second hand and I was looking at the prices and it's only like, you know, five, six dollars on thrift books, so or eBay. So I think that's another great option for you if you wanted to have it in person. So this is a little bit more accessible than um the some of the other ones that I've um found for vintage patterns. So I think this is a great option. What I would change about this is the bottom ribbing. Um it's done in moss stitch but I think I would change the bottom, or is that moss stitch or is that, I don't know if they call it something else, like Trinity stitch, but I would um, change that to be just one by one ribbing. So that's what I would do, but that's pretty simple. Um, and I might uh, kind of shorten the cardigan by one pattern repeat. I think the length is a little longer than what I would prefer, so. But that's that's it. I think this is like pretty much as close to what I want. Um, I think the neckline also looks really good. I don't love that it's knit in pieces, but I think all of the patterns that I've presented so far are knit in pieces bottom up. So you know that's the that's the name of the game when you're knitting these kind of things, I guess. So this one very very close. So that was uh, Aaron Cardigan by Gwyn Morgan. The last one in this list, the final boy. This is the most recent pattern of all of them. All of the things that I've presented so far. This is Peated Whiskey by Thea Coleman. And this was released in February of 2020. And you can purchase this pattern on Ravelry right now. Uh, so very accessible. The pattern yarn weight that's recommended is Aran weight. So that's going to be 5.5 millimeters to five and five millimeter needles. Um, this has the widest size range available so far. Um, the range is from 36.5 inches all the way to 69 inches, um, which is 92.75 centimeters to 175.25 centimeters around the bust. So size inclusive, A+. I really like this one. This is also like very, very, very close to what I was imagining when I said I want an Aaron cardigan or the cable cardigan. This is it, like pretty much. Um, I love that it has afterthought pockets that you could choose to uh, knit or omit that fit the pattern of the sweater. That's delightful. And I think the fit is really good throughout the garment. It has a little bit of, you know, positive ease in the body and then the arms slightly drop shouldered i love that this is a more modern pattern so i'm thinking it'll kind of like handhold you a little bit more than the other ones where the like the the more vintage ones tend to kind of like throw you into the um into the fray and it's like you'll figure it out um but yeah so that's another positive for me placing this on the top the only thing I will say that is kind of making me hesitate, well, there's two things. One thing is in the sample photo, the neckline looks a little bit wide. 
um, where it almost kind of starts to look a little boat necky, and I don't love boat neck um, cardigans, but I think that could be easily corrected. And in some of the other projects, uh, there's uh, plenty of projects for this pattern as well, so that's also another plus. But in other projects, the neckline doesn't seem as wide, so I don't know if that's like something that happened just because of the wool that they used or whatever, but that's something to you know, keep in mind for myself. And then the other thing is that the diamond cable is... It's... I don't know what this pattern is called, but it kind of is like a double diamond where it kind of trellises up, like interwoven. These two diamonds are like kind of stacked like this versus like a straight column of them, which isn't a big deal, I feel like, but I don't know. Like I was imagining just having the straight diamonds, but I also feel like that's something that I could possibly change. Um, so or I could just knit it up, it's like not a big deal, you know? So I feel like that is kind of negligible, but this is super close to what I was thinking. Uh, these are the five that I found. I'm sure there's more and you're gonna be like, girl, if you're gonna be this picky, you should just like design your own. Or whatever, or just like figure out how to knit better. But yeah, I get it, but also like, I don't have the brain space for that. I would love to just follow a pattern, which is why I did this um, whole rabbit hole search for Aaron cardigans. But yeah, I'm excited to start on a project. Oh, I can. I guess I can also talk about the yarn I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using this yarn. I think this is um, Debbie Bliss. De De I think this is Debbie Bliss Cash Merino. I'll leave the exact details like I'll put it up here and also on the description down below but this is a yarn that I <laughs> but this is a yarn that I kind of harvested from an existing sweater that I had um, made it I unraveled a sweater there's a YouTube shorts about it that you can go watch but I've been thinking like what I what do I want to do with this yarn and I feel like this kind of like cable cardigan is like what I want but this is I don't think this is like quite the right thickness it was definitely listed as Aran but it's thinner than that so I'm going to have to hold like a mohair or something with it to kind of give it the extra bulk but this yarn tends to felt um, kind of so I think uh, holding it with something that'll make it a little bit less uh, fragile I think is going to be good so like I'm thinking either a mohair or like a sorry alpaca or something to give it a little bit more volume so that's my plan as a wrap up really excited to have this cardigan in my wardrobe it's so itchy but I'm not going to get rid of it uh, it feels really sturdy and I'm pretty sure this was like knit in like the 70s based on like some of the patterns or the labels that I've seen so I have this cardigan. I have reasons to believe that this is hand knit and not uh, machine knit, but um, maybe we could have a discussion around that. <laughs> and I'm excited to start knitting my own cable cardigan, Aaron cardigan. So you can watch me struggle through that by subscribing to the channel and then watching my regularly scheduled podcast episodes where I talk about all the struggles I face on a bi-weekly basis. So hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know if you've knit any of these five patterns that I uh, presented. And if you have any other suggestions of other patterns that fit my criteria, please let me know because I, I looked through Ravelry up and down sideways uh, inside out and I couldn't find it anymore. So let me know. Hope you guys are having a great whatever t day, time, whatever it is that you're watching this video and I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys later. Goodbye. Oh, it's so hot. Okay. And I had a lot of things that were like close but not like close but no dice, you know what I mean? I'll have a separate Ravelry bundle for all the ones that I thought were nice, but wasn't quite it. Mm -hmm.